Hey guys, just doing the last little final touches here before we head to New York on the boat and I figured I got a quick little tip for you and this is about your transducer and um, getting the transducer level or actually even pointing it at an angle so it's looking out in front of the boat. So just real quick, uh, this is mostly for 2D. Uh, it would work with down imaging too, but this is mostly for 2D based on the shape of uh, the cone. So basically just without diving into it too deep, very quickly um, on 2D you have a, a cone, you either have usually two frequencies, either 83 kilohertz, which is a much wider, um, less detailed cone. Think of it as very big. It's usually equal to the depth the cone diameter is. And then you have 200 kilohertz, which is a much narrower cone and has you know greater detail. I think it's equivalent usually to like a third of the depth is the diameter of the cone or the area that you're seeing on the bottom. But a lot of times when people are drop shotting and stuff, they'll see a school of fish or they'll, um, see something they want to pitch to or drop their bait down to and they want to watch their bait fall down uh, to that area and they, they might get it for just a second or two and then it falls out of the cone and they get frustrated they're like man what's you know what's going on why can't I see my bait and that's oftentimes because if you actually look at your trolling motor um, in the water if this is in front of your boat and this is your trolling motor it should be you know what you would think in your mind would be 90 degrees looking straight down oftentimes it's actually kicked back a little bit and it's almost looking behind you and underneath your boat and what you're seeing then is, you know, actually underneath you. So I'll give you a quick little tip here of what I do to help um, kick it, you know, looking forward out towards the front of the boat and help you catch those fish that you see. And I, they may actually be right underneath the trolling motor or even out in front instead of totally underneath your boat. All right, so basically all you're gonna need is some piece of rubber. Um, you can go to the hardware store and get something. I got this from work, it's a little blanket that was gonna be thrown away. And I figured I can put it to good use here. Um, basically all you need to do is shim your transducer. I have a transducer shield and saver here on my trolling motor. Um, I'll zoom, look back here a little bit. See the front of the trolling motor, the prop. Uh, so when this is unstowed and in the water, you want to basically prop up the backside so your transducer, instead of being flat, is kicked kind of like this and looking actually out in front of you. And uh, this is really big. It comes in handy in places like Table Rock, stuff like that. But then where we're going in New York, uh, a lot of times the smallmouth sit so tight to the bottom that you cannot find them on down imaging, uh, really, or uh, side imaging sometimes that actually will swim away from underneath the boat as you're graphing. And then your best bet is actually just to kind of put trail more down and fish slowly and drift a little bit and you'll actually see them come up off the bottom and uh, look at your bait or eat something. And this you know, lets you be at least looking out in front of the boat so you're not totally on top of them. All right, so that's all there is to it. It's super simple and hopefully helps you put some more fish in the boat. And that's my little quick tip for the day. Stay tuned, we'll have plenty of footage uh, from New York. Might even try and do some live streaming on Facebook and on YouTube, see how that goes. We'll experiment with it a little bit and uh, hopefully we catch some big ones. So thanks for watching guys.